Yo, Rhino, behavior analyst and creator. All things behavior analysis is what you'll find on this channel, The Daily BA. We like to nerd out on psychology and today a simple concept that we all know for the most part, but when I learned about this distinction myself in graduate school for behavior analysis, it fundamentally altered the way that I approached, well, just about the entire world around me, and that's no joke. In behavior analysis, it's assumed, and there's actually substantial evidence for that your behavior, my behavior, our behavior as living organisms, is influenced in part by the world around us. That is the environment influences our behavior and not only the stimuli or things around us that influence us doing things, but the conditions that follow, the stimuli that follow after our behavior, such as maybe the comments after I post this video, right? Can also influence our behavior. As a quick example, our phone is actually full of what a behavior analyst would call antecedent stimuli. These things that precede our behavior, of which there's a whole lot of things we could do with this, right? Um, such as calling, texting, social media, ing, playing games, right? But all of these behaviors that I just listed also have stimuli that follow them or postcedents. And that's just a fancy word for the stimuli that just happen afterwards. So for example, the sight of a text message popping up on my phone is the antecedent stimulus that will lead to my behavior, picking it up, texting, typing my reply, and then sending it, which is followed by a whole list of different stimulations, such as like the feeling and the sight of the corresponding uh, words and text being formed, as well as like the send and the actual delivered message underneath. So with that out of the way, objects can be thought of and each one can be actually analyzed individually. That is for you, for each person in two ways, stimulus as objects and stimuli and their functions. Stimulus objects, stimulus functions. So stimuli as objects. These are the physical properties of something. And we could take my hydro flask here. For example, uh, the actual measurements, what it's made out of, how all the atoms are organized, uh, the actual like size and shape. Um, all of these could be described. I'm not a physicist, a chemist, but like these have certain physical properties, right? But then there's also stimulus functions. And these are ways in which a stimulus can provide value to me, the effects that it can have if I were to behave with respect to it. So for example, I can use this to be able to obtain water and drink water. I could put any other liquid in there if I wanted to. I mean, I could put sand in it if I was trying to like bring sand back from the beach to put, I don't know, on a bottle on the shelf. I would never do something like that. But this is an example of how it can function in different ways. I could also like throw it at the screen. Maybe you just flinch there as a result. Um, I could use it if there was an intruder to be able to defend myself. Like I could use it as a rolling pin. I could put booze in it. I could sneak it in. I could sneak my snacks in to like the movie theater with it. I could use it as a paperweight, hold things down. Stickers, things like this are, could be signals to like interact with me on some sort of social level of like, why do you have a Reno sticker? Or why do you have a Grand Teton sticker? So it could obtain different social interactions. These could have limitless, theoretically, functional properties. In each of those silly or real cases, what I've done is describe different ways in which that stimulus, my hydro flask, may function for me. And quick side note, we could further classify these if we wanted to into different classification systems, such as reinforcing effects, punishing effects, etc. So why does this matter? Well, each of us has a unique history of interacting with the world around us and stimuli come to function or interact with our behavior with us, both as objects, but really also as functions. And function in particular was very interesting for me. Some of these functions are more known across cultures, such as devices for drinking, right? Like we can probably recognize those across cultures, generally speaking, but others could be more discreet or less known. And since I learned about this early in my behavioral career, um, I've thought about the world of stimuli around me as like this giant big puzzle, things to be explored, understood, not just for their formal properties um, or stimuli as objects themselves, right? But for their functions that they can provide to me or perhaps provide to others or society at large. It's kind of absurd, but I want to learn all the ways in which stimuli may function for humans within reason, like ethics and morals, of course, right? But there's so many out there, like I don't think I'll ever achieve that but it doesn't mean I won't stop learning about them. This video is brought to you in part by patrons, people like you that support my efforts financially. For three years now, I've actually made these videos and lost money, like actually lost money. And I create these because, well, I think it's important. The field's important. The findings are important. The people are important that are doing important things. Um, and they need to be heard by people like you. So if you're interested in helping support, consider supporting me down on Patreon, top link down below. And if anything, just, I hope you learned something, like, share, subscribe, like those things actually make a difference um, and share it with a friend perhaps. Thank you so much. And that's your daily BA.